What's this? Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. I'm curious. If we don't collect all the necessity clothes, do we fail this? I don't, I don't expect what she fell. There's a lot of broken stuff. What is that? A dress? Oh, these are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Her clothes are here, but she's nowhere to be found. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Wait, when did... When did the lens of... The, those were empty, not... Ugh, this is so confusing. Hannah doesn't want to be a detective anymore. Okay, but when did you change? I think we can all agree there's, like, an obvious solution. They are turned to water. For some reason. Something or maybe there is something that has to turn them into water or something. Uh, the floor is wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which... Why would there be water here? Really, do you have to question me? I don't you question why it's broken in the first place? Oh, Hyman knows! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? Uh, that can't be. Trolley moves along tracks from start to finish. It couldn't have hit the vase at this distance. Hmm. Let's note this down too and think about it later. What is this place? It seems someone could fit through here. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. We're just about done investigating down here. Yes, let's head back up. Well, we've ascertained the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. It seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the opera house's basement. 
The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! Okay. Now her glasses are empty. Why is it here? Hmm. The plot thickens. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. Huh. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. That's right. This is how indemnitium is produced. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will, and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a leg called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. You know, at least this game is more relatable, you know, a cold scenario that, you know, a certain man was so that they want a piece of everyone. <laughs> and even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Are they providing food? Really? Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Huh. Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Really? Although I feel a certain person uh, gonna react very happy about tea and biscuits. Just kidding! Just kidding! Paima will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean? No snacks. Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. Really, we say talk again? Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever the fancy strikes her. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. Hey, Eddie. <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These 
three are quite the interesting group. Ah! And Paimon thought it smelled good while it was still in the oven. Oh, it's even better now. Paimon can't stop drooling. From the way you had these two guys carrying all that stuff around, Paimon thought you'd have them do more during the baking process. But you ended up doing the entire thing by yourself! Beating the egg whites, grinding almonds, everything! I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. Okay, I don't know, but I want to see a sequel of this day. Uh, Paimo was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites and baking like this? Well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Now, how are she? Don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Anyway, give these a try. Fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. Black tea. Okay, Tweet is gonna like this. No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. I didn't say that. Really, game now. Why do you want bother? All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? The flower vase and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel. Resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. Perhaps the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. But... The only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troop's members. <sighs> Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Let me have a look. Oh, it seems I kind of missed it. Though. Anna? Hotel house? Uh, can I go back and resolve that? Although, I don't know, but I have to give it. This could be the easiest way to access here, but they actually put an extra effort in this. But consider the water and the story of the last update, I think it's kind of obvious what's happened. They are turned to water. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! 
<laughs> they are my specialty after all. And I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> what? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Why am I only counting three? Honest! Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. Wait. Even you don't believe Paimon? Oh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn Why do I feel this update is gonna reveal something about Paimon? And please, game, do something with her. You need to have something that we want some explanation. <laughs> Alright, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Malus, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. How many do you have? Uh, well, this really is your hobby, huh? Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. It would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. Alright, thanks for your help, and for the snacks! <laughs> it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go! I'll be back if I find anything new. All right, it's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh, it's probably going to be a long and difficult case. <laughs> There's no point in worrying about that now. We just need to prepare. Here, take Pylon's notes. They should help you review the situation. The music is talking again. What do we do? The whole situation is so confusing. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. Besides, I doubt Farina understands any more about what happened than we do. <laughs> Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. <laughs> 